a lot of people are introverted and a lot of people are extroverted and um, we tend to you know especially after covid we tend to place a lot of um weight on ourselves for being introverted and um, being shy and you know like digital communication has made it easier for us to connect with other people without having to physically interact with them right why i'm talking about introversion today is uh i saw this like post on instagram that tells you how to kind of like act right and so i kind of focused on those um and like action guides, so to speak, um, early in my coaching uh, career. I wanted to provide people with like actions on what they can do when they are introverted and they have to make conversations, right? So I went down that path and then I went on a, I, I stopped pursuing that path of trying to give people like specific actions to do because to me, it doesn't solve any like root level problems. It just treats the surface level problems. And I always think um, people do things for a reason. And when that reason is unaddressed, like whatever you do at the top surface level, it, starts, it doesn't really matter in the, in the end. So uh, three things I want to specifically talk about today, right? So number one is um, introverted people have a hard time talking um, about like small talk, right? And so small talk is hard for a lot of reasons. Maybe you don't know how much of your personal information you should kind of like talk about. Is this too much information or am I talking too less and you're trying to gauge these things and then you don't know what topic is good for, you know, um, small talk. So again, a lot of reasons why um, small talk is like considered difficult for introversion, right? But underneath the surface of that, is this belief that this is all superficial, like this kind of superficial conversation is meaningless because it's not deep. And that is an opinion, right? Because um, people can argue differently about like how much of a you know deep conversation is meaningful, right? Um, the TV show community has a nice episode about this. Like and um, like deep conversations, are they always meaningful? Shallow conversations, are they always like not meaningful? So that's all open for interpretation. But as an introvert, if you are believing that shallow interactions don't really matter and only deep ones matter, you may want to look at why you believe that. Like. What causes you to believe that only deep interactions matter? Maybe it's when you, you know, like sometimes it's out of spite. Sometimes you feel like other people who are extroverted uh, looking really happy when they're talking about all this like surface level, like uh, benign, um, not benign, like um, superficial crap and they seem all happy and joyful. Maybe you're in spite because I want to be popular too. I'm not like placing fingers because that's literally my story throughout my high school and college years, right? And so when you look at the base reason and um, your platform on why you came to believe that shallow conversation is bad and only deep one is good, you may be able to think differently about your introversion. So the second thing I wanna talk about is like social behavior, right? Um, exchanging pleasantries and giving smiles and eye contact. And um, a, a lot of introverted people believe that those are all fake. You're not happy to see them and you're not that excited to talk about this with them. But like, you know, um, this is all fake. It's all manipulative, right? And so you would rather be genuine and you want to, you know, like, um, you don't want to be fake. And that's why when you try to be sociable, you're always feeling like you're a liar. You're a faker for acting this way. And that makes it that much difficult for you to have social interactions because you're an introverted person. So underneath the surface of that, again, what is the reason? Like, why do you believe? Like, how did you come to believe that social behavior is all fake? Like, why? is making someone smile with the, you know, like sociable behavior, so to speak. Why is that fake? And why does it have to equate to being bad? And maybe that's because um, 
one potential reason of like specifically why that may be is because maybe you relied on someone. You really trusted someone who was all pleasant and nice to you, but then it ended up being like a very transactional relationship. And then they kind of, you felt really like backstabbed and you're like, whoa, I never want to feel this way again. So I'm just going to not trust people who just kind of talk sweet up to me. And I don't want to be that type of person either, right? But so like what, but the aftermath of that, when you really think about it is that one person who backstabs you, like continues to control your life with that knife in the back. And maybe a good time to ask yourself, do you want to do that? Do you want to live like that? There's no right answer there. And it depends on the stage of your life you're at, but it's a good question to ans uh, ask yourself regardless. Now, the third one I want to talk about is the world prefers uh, extroverts. And this I want to specifically talk about in the context of like um, uh, promotions and professional careers, right? So there's this saying called like squeaky uh, wheel gets the grease and you know, a lot of outspoken people and extroverted people seem to get a lot of the nicer treatments when, you know, you're dedicated and you're hardworking too. You just don't flaunt it like other people, but you never get recognized for your work, right? And so a lot of people, well, again, like I'm saying this as if like you're say, uh, believing this, but this is what I used to believe. And I think a lot of people can relate to this as well, right? So does the world actually like prefer extroverts? For this one, I want to do a mental exercise that's a little different. So let's say you're trying to promote someone. Now, that's a task for you, right? That's a job. And with anything, when it becomes a job, it, it's difficult. You, it's not always easy. So you're looking for a good solution to this task that you've been given. And now, when you're seeing it from that perspective, what's easier, trying to ask everybody in your team if they want to be promoted and, you know, like what they did and, you know, like um, how much of contributions in the past they um, do they think is warranting a promotion and such versus someone coming up to you and always expressing, hey, I won't really want that promotion. And like, I'm always looking for, you know, um, opportunities to... Uh, make my career go up and things like that. And you would obviously think the second is a easier option for you, right? They're kind of solving your problem on your behalf. Um, and imagine if you're looking for a product, any product, let's say sneakers, and there's no advertisement for sneakers and you have to kind of like look around everywhere and maybe the, your favorite sneakers, they don't have ads for it and you just didn't come across it and you never get to find it. But when advertisements are shown and when people like present their sneakers to you, it makes the decision making process a lot easier for you, right? That's why we Google for like buyer's guides and uh, recommendations for a product or like uh, whether, uh, movie ratings and things like that because we think our time is precious and we want the best value out of things, right? So looking at that, Looking at from that perspective, the more you communicate and the more you present what you are and who you are out into the world, the less like the easier it makes for certain people who are looking for that qualities in other people. So in that way, it's not really like an introversion or an extroversion thing. It's more like are your values more like I mean, is the value of you more immediately presentable to the people who seek it? And that, I think, is something that transcends the simple binary discourse around introversion and extroversion. So all in all, what I'm trying to say in this video is preferring to be introverted and preferring to be extroverted, those are like just individual choices. Um, I like Pepsi. My wife likes Coca-Cola. I don't like golf. I have a lot of coworkers who like golf. So like there's nothing wrong with any of those. But the moment you start thinking that you are at a disadvantage and things are unfair and things suck because of you are something, that's when you want to really reassess, why am I thinking this? Like, what is the platform in which this belief sits in? So I hope that helps with your um, personal journey. And if this video helps, it would really mean a lot if you subscribe and uh, like the video and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video.